And we are back. We are back, bumblebees. I almost jumped in and stole your bumblebees. That's fucked up. I know, right? It would have been funny, though. It would have been funny. Trying to match your energy. Everybody look at her today. Don't. (laughs) I'm super self-conscious right now. It's so different. It is different. I don't think I've ever seen you with lipstick on since we've been together. No, I stopped wearing it during our courting phase because you said you wouldn't kiss me. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) I got rid of all my lipstick. It's not just lipstick. It's chapstick. It's anything, any texture. Like I I have a hard time eating donuts. Like I love donuts, but I have to wash my face right after I eat them. Yeah. it, any type of slime or stick to my lips just does not do it. I have a hard time with my lips getting like the saliva dry. Yeah. You know, when you're like, and it's like just a little tacky. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't do it. I don't know. It freaks me out. Yeah. It's fucking weird. So hopefully your your whole experiment of no transfer works out. We'll see. I kissed the back of the receipt that I got this from, and there's like 18 pieces of lipstick print on that. So <laughs> so it transfers. It transfers. False advertisement. I'm going to see if it maybe needs to dry a little bit more. Yeah, or maybe. Maybe. It could be a stain thing. I don't maybe. know. Maybe you got to put it on, leave it on for an hour and wipe it off. I don't know. No, I don't know. Are you, what, are you going to do like the Jeffree Star and uh, Urban Decay and like start going hard on the makeup thing? I think so. Yeah. I dig that. Yeah. Why? Um. Uh, self-care, mm-hmm. right? Because that's definitely self-care. It is. Um, anything that you can do that's going to spend time researching and giving you new information that's not Grace and Frankie mm. or the you know the TV shows that you watch on repeat just in your headphones to listen to in your headphones. Well, I, I listen to a lot of other things like audiobooks and oh, I know you psychological do. stuff. I, I know you do, but I, I look over quite a bit and it's Grace and Frankie. That's that's like a, a comfort thing for you. Yeah. So I only use that as an example, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm here for it. Anytime you're doing something that you're going to learn about, like I'm, I'm about it. Yeah. I, I am not, I would probably watch some of those with you if that's what, like, if we were doing like a night on YouTube and I, and I was like, all right, what do you want to watch? Cause we've watched six adventure of a bike videos and you were like, how about Jeffrey star? I'd be like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Okay. I actually love Jeffree Star. Do you? I do. People hate him and he has a past as everybody does. No. Right? No. Oh my gosh! Condemn he's, him. He's Send not him perfect. To hell. No. Crazy. He's not. Crazy. Um, and he has come out and talked a lot about, about a lot of things and apologized and corrected behavior and recognized, like, yes, I was a piece of shit then. I don't know. He just has this no fuck attitude, and I respect the shit out of that. Yeah, me too. Only thing I know about him is he looks like an alien, and his face stresses me out. Why does his face stress you out? Um, because he looks like an alien. Like the, sh- the is it the no eyebrows? I, I don't know what it is. It may it could be. I it bet very it's the well no eyebrows. Be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a hang up for a lot of people. I never placed it. There's just something about his face that often makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. So if there's no eyebrows there, that could be why. Because we're mm-hmm. supposed to have eyebrows. Even fake ones like that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we're um episode two, season two, episode seven. Before you continue on, I want to specify the make that I'm doing. I'm not doing contour and crazy eyeshadow. Why not? Because that's a lot of makeup on my face and I appreciate my skin. What do you mean? I, I don't I don't know anything about this shit. So talk so, to me like a five year old. Okay. So the women there are men, the people who really deep dive makeup and doing tutorials and all those kind of things, they primer and foundation and contour and powders and concealers like they're putting so many different products on their face and i have very sensitive skin okay and i'm not trying to have breakouts and cystic acne and i'm not i'm not looking for would would that happen from like a once a month kind of thing or would that happen from a daily use kind of thing how does that work um i guess it depends on the skin type yeah i guess that makes sense i also i just don't enjoy having a lot of makeup on my face yeah I mean, I'm going to be doing like eyeshadows and whatnot. I'm, I'm not teaching you guys how to do it. I'm doing it and then giving my thoughts about it. Right. I am More like a product review. Yes. All right. I was just curious. I didn't know if there was a, ever a scenario where we were like going to go do a movie date that you would get completely done up. No, I don't think so. That's good, though, because you have good skin. I do have and, good skin. And I guess that makes sense because you're not clogging your pores. Right. Um, I had a friend who was a, a, a licensed makeup artist who was going to make a run at YouTube a while back. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I helped her record a video about cleaning her things. And she was talking about all the sponges and shit. And the only thing that I retain from that is that you're supposed to clean those. Yes. Like a lot. And yeah. the amount of people who don't, because she kept saying like, this is why you guys are having problems with your skin. Mm-hmm. Um, that's crazy to me. Like you, you, you eventually replace your toothbrush. Right. You, you know what I mean? And like now toothbrushes have the little ultrasonic cleaner that has like, uh, you know, the, the, the light. Mm-hmm. To, so, you, you know, if it's going to be in your mouth, why wouldn't you do that to your skin? Right. I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I don't put anything on my skin besides bar soap. You use lotion. No. Oh, I use prescription shit when my skin gets bad on my face. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I've never, fuck, for probably 20 years, I didn't even wash my face with soap. Yeah. Didn't have to. My I have that really bad skin dandruff now, but mm-hmm. that that happened way later in life. It's weird. Skin is weird. It is. It's an organ. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest organ, on, the largest organ in your body, of your body. No dick jokes. No dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm all dick, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Episode, season two, episode seven. <laughs> what a start. What a start. Yeah. Um, we are going to be creating, I, 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 I am going to be creating a travel kit so that from now on, when we go on vacation, we can take three microphones, a mixer, XLR cables and everything into one, one nice little case so that while we travel and do shit, if we want to do meet and greets, or if we want to interview people that we're in the town with or live stream or live streams, we can do all of that shit on vacation. That's one of my goals for the month of January. Okay, to, to make that or to do that? To get it together. Okay. So that it's all there. Because we, I have to go and see what I already have because we've bought... A lot. A lot, right? You know, we, fuck, we've bought a lot. Just in camera gear. You know what I mean? Um, but I would like to be able to figure out what I already have, what I need to con- like purchase aside from that to just keep in the case so that it's always ready to go when we leave so that when we're doing our Airbnb travel things, it's all there. Because I, I want to be able to make sure that we're able to still kind of keep up with things while we're going do life content because we are create we've created the life accounts on both tiktok and youtube at the time of this recording we've posted multiple things on the actual to be better youtube channel that are like you learning how to use the clutch on the quad uh replacing the nerf bars Mm -hmm. you're going to start doing makeup stuff on the life account yes Uh, it's going to be makeup and conspiracy theories yeah are you going to talk about the conspiracy theories while As you're doing, I'm doing it? my makeup? Yeah that's, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. We should probably look into getting you a different setup. I was just thinking like we're going to have to get like a table and ring lights or another one of those things. I wonder if we could get a vanity to put in the bedroom because we've got that one big wall. There, there's nothing on it. We could just get like a huge vanity that's all completely set up. I don't know how you would record from a vanity though. Uh, shooting into the mirror. It would be backwards. Okay. But I, I don't think that, that would matter. I, I will figure this out. I can just use a handheld mirror and you can have a camera on your face. Well, if that's the case, we can put the camera on the desk mm-hmm. in a ring light so that you can see yourself in the mirror and it's just recording you. Okay. We'll figure that. I'll figure it out, babe. Mm-hmm. I got this. My husband got me. <laughs> so is that is that, a, is that a January goal for us then? Do we need to add that to the list of things that we have to do? Yes. Okay. I would like to add that to the list. <clears throat> okay. We talked in December about having a dirt bike track cut in here for the kids. Let's, mm-hmm. let's do let's do a quick little kid life update. Okay. We bought <laughs> those high boy balance bikes for the kids that were electric, and they yes. have to like run with them. And they've never been on bikes before. And throttle, right? Yeah. And I'm like, this is so good because mm-hmm. they're going to learn how to use a throttle, and then we can get them real throttle bikes. And like in my head, this is going to be like a bam, 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 bam thing, right? Mm. Day one, they learned how to ride these bikes. They did. They're not able to go like all the way around the property and like do crazy 360s. But like for a day one, it's so much better than training wheels, guys, Mm -hmm. because they're just running with their legs and then they put their feet up until the momentum stops and they fall and they catch themselves with their feet. Right. And then as they learn how to use the throttle, it's not a jerk. Yes. Like they'll start running with the throttle on and when it engages, they just pull their feet up and it'll keep the momentum going, the inertia so that they're not following left and right. And they're also able to learn while holding the throttle that if they feel themselves going, they can hit the ground real quick with their foot, yeah. recorrect the balance and keep going with the throttle. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about those bikes from a parent standpoint is the brake is so big. Yeah. Very hard to pull. And it is very hard to pull for little hands. Yeah. So we got those and they mastered those bikes 
I'm mm-hmm. using that term mastered very loosely. Yeah. <laughs> They're not falling and they can go around the gym. <laughs> right. They they mastered it enough for me to be a proud papa like. Mm. Look at you go, you know. They're getting it. Yeah. yeah. So much so that I went and got my e-bike out and was like riding around and you were on the pedal moped bike thing, mm-hmm. the Rev 1 bike riding around the property, um having fun with the kids. So I bought a Stasic 16-inch throttle 20 volt mm-hmm. with an extra battery so like they could take turns. And she got on it and hit that throttle and it scared the Jesus out of her because it, it, it started to come up and that jerkiness, it was it very, worked. yeah. So I have to slow my roll a little bit on the excitement of the kids and let them get comfortable in new things before I start. I like, come on, you got Upgrading. this, you got this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we bought them riding boots. Got which, them helmets. <laughs> what? You know how moms have that new shoe for the kids, like their first shoes, how mm-hmm. cute they are. These riding boots are this big, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> tiny. Yeah. Because it's a four and five year old little legs. Yeah. And I've never had a, oh, that's cute moment with shoes ever in my life. Mm -hmm. We open those boxes and I'm like. (laughs) 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 And watching them try to walk. It's like watching them walk in their dad's boots kind of thing. Like, because they're so big on their feet and she fell over and he's walking like this. (laughs) You know, it was was exciting. It's fun. But we got them dirt bike helmets and gloves and riding pants and, and they're. They're, they're enjoying that. And it's created a whole new bonding experience with mm-hmm. us because we're able to sit outside with them while they do these things and then eventually get our toys out. and Ride then, with them. Yep. Yeah. And then we upgraded to quads. So we got them 90cc uh, clutchless, mm-hmm. like automatic quads. And they rode around those for a little bit. And then, you know, we got into our quads as well so that we can start doing these things together and having family time. The reason that I bring that aspect up is because the life of count on to be better life on YouTube is going to be a lot of that kind of content, not with our kids. Cause we're not putting our kids on the internet, mm-hmm. but it will be life stuff where we're out doing shit. And, and we have on our main account, we've created the triple R content, which um, I think this is the first time we've talked about this on the podcast. I don't know. It's not, it's not. Mm-mm. Okay. We talked about it the other day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it anyways. Okay. Okay. Just because I, I don't just to make sure. Yeah. Guys. So, we used to sit down and have these crazy 45 minute conversations about everything. And it was fun. And like, we would, we would rehash things over and over again and it didn't seem like a a big deal. Okay. So I had to cut that because Peach just hit her vape a little too hard. Almost died. Almost. Um, the reason that I, so anyways, we used to rehash all those things and it was just normal content. It was fun for us. And we've gotten to the point where there's so many accounts and so much content going out that I never know what we've rehashed. And and like, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. Mm. So I'm going to just quickly touch on the triple R thing and then we're going to move on. The R, triple R thing is um, reviews, relations, and recreations. And it's content that we've, we're making that is reviewing products that we like, how we've used them to, to strengthen the bond between you and I. We give it a rating system of like one through 10. Mm-hmm. And then we are going to show recreation on how we've actually gone out and used it. So the first time we take the quads out, there'll be videos of us riding quads through mud and you you know, learning how to corner properly and and all of that fun stuff, right? Yeah. So it'll be a way for you guys to get another window into our lives because we find bonding moments in everything that we do. It's not just this. Mm -hmm. We're sexual Mm -hmm. intimacy. There's a lot. We had a conversation this morning about the future and um, about my mental health and like where my head is today. And we turned that into a bonding moment because instead of you just standing there while I was talking to you, I put you in my lap and we, we just had a you know, an hour conversation about everything that's going on and and those moments matter. So we're hoping that the triple R content will be able to give you guys an insight on, on ways to think outside of the box to make your relationship that much better. That'll be on the regular, regular to be better account. We're not Mm going to put that on the life account yet. Depending on what the life account does, we may move that. There's like 4,500 followers on that account, so it's not a big account. Right. Um, And I don't want to waste the content, but I also understand that people follow us because they want the relationship and the communication help. Right. But we're not one-trick ponies. We have a lot to offer the world and a lot of things that we want to share with you guys, so we Mm -hmm. don't want to just do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're moving into the interviews and all the conversations that we've had with other um, creators and business owners. I feel like there's value in all of that. It just may not be everyone's cup of tea. So like right. there's a weird balance point in all of this. But I, I am excited with the future of, of everything and, and how things are starting to settle in. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> we are still doing R&R content. We haven't done one in a while because we have so many interviews lined up that I don't want to record an R&R episode and it sit for three months, you know. Well, we can sprinkle it in. Yeah. Bonus drops. Right. If we have 
I'm going to use Troy as an example. I know that his content's already released, but we did three interviews with him. Yeah, we dropped all three of them back to back, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. I know that we have interviews with people where we're not doing that. Yeah. And it's going to be played out. So say we have three weeks worth of interviews done, we can push one of those interviews back a week. Yeah. To drop an R and R. Yep. So uh, yeah, and we can do that. I actually um I did that business interview with Charles. I dropped that this morning at 7 a.m. just to mm. see what it would do. It's crazy to me how many people ask for business related podcast and then when I make them they don't do anything. Yeah. There's just no traction there. I don't know if it's the the verbiage that I'm using in the video or the metrics or whatever. Could be the algorithm. It could yeah. be. It could be because that's not our normal content. I did find out that if you are subscribed to the channel and you don't interact with the videos when you see it on the subscribed page, it will stop showing you because I have certain people that I watch their videos all the time and it shows up on my main screen on YouTube, but then I'll go in like, there'll be dots next to the name under the subscription and it's not showing up under my subscribed feed anymore. It's weird the way that YouTube does things. I also heard that if you're notified of a video being released or uh, a live stream if you don't interact with the notification it'll stop sending the notifications because youtube views that as you not caring about the content wow. after so many times mm -hmm. speaking of live streams i know that we cut our wednesday lives i was mm -hmm. talking to aj this morning about metrics and he said that us only going live on sunday nights could be a potential problem because we go late live so late and for people who have kids they're putting their kids to bed and like winding down for the night it's hard for them to actually be engaged I think we should do one during Saturday, like <clears throat> at some point during the day on Saturday. Why Saturday? Because that's when majority of people are home cleaning, working in the garage, doing yard work, mowing the lawn with AirPods popped in. And that really gives them one to two hours to sit down and interact. Well, not interact, but listen if they wanted to, to a live stream. Yeah. My only concern about that is every live stream we've ever done on Saturday has been a miss. We haven't had like a successful Saturday live stream. I'm not saying we can't do it. Okay. Um, I do have a group thing that I've got going on on Saturdays that I joined. That Let's I, do a poll. Okay. Let's just post a poll on YouTube. I can I can post it as like a, yeah, I will. I will. It doesn't even have to be a part of a video. I'll do that today. Yeah. Just remind me when we're done. Okay. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. Get, get the voice of the people. I want to touch on something real quick. And it, <laughs> it's totally unrelated to anything we've discussed or have actually discussed on the podcast. So as you guys know or don't know, I have a garden segment on our Patreon and I have been going over the Gypsy Rose case, not her being released from prison, the actual like lead up to what happened, how it formed. I actually spent almost two hours reading text messages between Nick and Gypsy just to kind of formulate who they are as characters and how they really interacted together. And this morning I saw a TikTok from, it's somebody saying that Gypsy Rose said this. I actually have not heard Gypsy Rose say this, so this could be absolutely made up. It's all about the he said, she, she said, said bullshit. bullshit. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but somebody was claiming that Gypsy said that, I guess she was engaged to someone prior, engaged to somebody prior, who is she is not married to now. She's married to a, a gentleman named Ryan. She was engaged to a dude named Ken, and then she started really blowing up because the Hulu, the act came out and he was like, I don't want any of this notoriety. I don't want to be in the limelight like this. So we ended the engagement. And she said she was absolutely devastated. And that was one of those moments where she missed her mom. Because this is a moment that she wanted to share with her mom to really lean on her like a pillar of support in her life. And it should have been like a moment between the two of them to bond. And I, I heard that and I was like, yeah, that's a nice thing to want. Like everybody wants their mom in their life. The the parent that the child looks most up to is the same sex parent. Like that is their Superman. The same sex parent? Really? Is yeah. that a thing? It is a thing. Yes. Okay. I didn't know that. that There's is, always mama's boy and daddy's girl. I didn't. No. Oh. So even if there is a mommy's boy and a daddy's <clears> girl, <throat> that little girl is still going to look to her mother as how to be a woman. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Right? Like okay. that is, that is their role model. So I could understand that sentiment. And then I really started thinking about it. And she, if that if she really said that, and that is her true thoughts and feelings, and she believes that would be the case if her mother were still alive, like that engagement ended and she would be able to run to her mom and be comforted, that's delusional. Because of the relationship that they had. Because of the relationship that they had. It was very volatile. She was very abusive towards Gypsy. And... That want, that hope, that that could have been a thing. I completely understand that. 
I think if she can't specify that to herself, though, like, I know that would not really be the case. It's just a dream, like a wish that I have. I think that's important to be able to distinguish what reality would be from your fantasies or your dreams. Because if her mom were alive, she would have never been in prison. All of those men would not have written into her asking for her hand in a relationship or marriage. She would have never been engaged to Ken because she would still be under her mother's thumb. So these are the three scenarios I thought of. I'm sorry. I'm really getting into this. You're good. <laughs> I actually, this is provoking a thought in me too. So. Okay. So I, I, I envisioned three outcomes if her mother were still alive, right? She would still be under her mother's thumb, faking the illness, maybe on board with it because she's recognizing how much revenue there is and lying about that kind of thing. She would have gotten contact with the police, maybe actually stood up out of her wheelchair and just walked in front of people and blew open the whole thing. And then her mother would be either in prison for child abuse or like financial fraud and lying to institutions. And that her mother being in prison could play out multiple ways. There could have been real, real remorse there. There could have been, I can't believe you did this to me. I'm your mother. I think that would have probably been the the more route. logical route. Right. <clears throat> or the third one would be that Gypsy would be dead. What is the ultimate sympathy a mother could receive? Lifelong grieving of her child dying from terminal illness. And Munchausen by proxy syndrome, what you see a lot of cases, majority of kids don't come out of that. Right. It's just, I think it's very important to point out that it's okay to have hope in things or like, I really wish this could be the case or it's okay. It's even okay for her to miss her mom. Right. Everybody's human. You need to... Being able to accept the reality of things, even though it hurts. I don't want to say that's how you grow. That's how you, I don't even really know what to call that. There's an evolution there. There certainly is an evolution there, right? But I was going to say it grounds you more into reality. But reality is a whole nother conversation that I've been really deep diving in my head for the last week. because well, I, Your reality is just the way that you perceive the world. Right. Reality is perception. Mm. And it's just... I, I've really deep dive that in my own brain. I just, but looking objectively at situations minus your emotions is the best way to perceive reality in the most accurate way that you can. So she got out of prison and gained 10 million followers in what, three days on TikTok? Something stupid like yeah. that. I think she's at like 9.8 right now. She's engaged, right? She's Currently married. Or married. Okay. Yeah, she got it, married in prison. So she's had this life of fame, mm. whether she wanted it or not. And in that moment, all she wanted was be able to relate to somebody who truly knew her, right? Like, what do you mean in that her, moment? Her what mom, moment? like in that oh, yeah. that moment where she supposedly said those things, mm -hmm. it's lonely. It's very lonely. This yeah. whole situation, we are we are lonely creatures now. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no real connections anymore. And right. regardless of the abuse that happened there, you have a connection to your parents, right? They whether you you know it was abusive or not, they did keep you alive mm -hmm. when when you could not do it yourself. There is that bond. I, I'm blessed in that I have an adopted family that loves me. You know what I mean? And like when I really truly need a mom figure, I have someone I can reach out to. But I haven't spoken to my mom in 14 years. Yeah. My biological yeah. mom. And and like every time I've thought like, you know, it'd be really nice to just have a conversation with her. I know that she hasn't changed. Right. Because I hear it from other people. Like mm -hmm. things are, she's still doing the same shit she's always done. I don't want the... I don't want the drama and the stress and the heartbreak that comes with having that back in my yeah. life. It's a constant letdown. Right. But to be able to just be like, I think that you would be really proud of the things that, that I've accomplished in life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you want, you want to be able to have those conversations mm -hmm. with people. And like, that's one of the fears that I have when, cause my mm -hmm. mom, you know, she's <laughs> the fact that she's still alive and like the, her, her shit hasn't killed her yet is fucking astonishing to me. Right. But I know that when that happens, I'm going to probably have like, massive regrets and all of this because I had the opportunity to have those moments and chose not to because I, I didn't want to go through the headache of, of dealing with it. I don't think, okay, so hear me out. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be experiencing your own regret. Why not? Because you are making the choices you are making now. You know the reality of the situation. Mm. It, it's going to go right back to where it was. You're going to be re-traumatizing yourself. BPD gets better when you are no longer being triggered by what caused the trauma. Right. So... And reaching out to your mom, I think that you would 100% make your mental health worse and well, a lot of things will go to shit in well, our lives. I know it would. I, I don't doubt <laughs> that for a second. So I think when she does pass, you're going to be feeling the regrets of the fact that she never made the decision to be a mother to you. 
Yeah, I think that'll come down to perspective. I, I think there'll be hurt there and that I'll have to, to grieve and process. But right. I, I don't know. I'm not super close to my biological father either. And though I was super stoked mm-hmm. when, when we reconnected, the little bit of a way that we did reconnect, when I found out that he had lung cancer and like was going through that surgery and thought he was going to die, like there, I was sad. Like I, I cried over that. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's weird because I don't have a relationship with him. And, and just because he's my, you know, DNA, like that's, there's no bond. I right. don't know my dad. I, I know the stories I've been told, mm-hmm. but he was never really truly there. So like, why, why would you get upset about that? I think that's just a, a natural thing for us. You know what I mean? And like, because of that, I think that if he did pass from all of that, I don't think that I would have been upset because I grieved it in that moment, you right. know? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. The whole point in all of that was because of the Gypsy Rose thing. I do think that people are disconnected and lonely. And I think the lack of ability to communicate properly and mm-hmm. people's own selfishness. Yeah. You know, because people don't really genuinely care about people anymore. They care about themselves. Mm-hmm. And you care about your tribe. Right. You know, you care about your kids. You care about the people you're close to, your best friends, things like that, the family that you've created. Mm-hmm. But even that gets skewed over time, you know, and people fall off. And and I, I think that we long for that. And I think that in that moment, she realized that like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just rough. That That is definitely one of those moments where your mother should be there for you. Yeah. Right. And I believe everybody. I don't care. You could be the most. What the fuck is his name? There was a guy who did really insane Arctic adventures. Like he's like 400 pounds and it's almost all muscle. Like this dude's like seven foot tall. Absolutely insane. He did this back in like the 1800s. I can't remember his name, but even him, I would place money on the bet that there were days where he felt like he was a five-year-old boy again and just wanted to be fucking held yeah. and loved. Yeah. And I think we all experience that at times. Right. So people, especially people who never had that, the nurturing, loving parents in their childhood, I bet they feel that almost all the time. And it's normal to feel that way. Do you think that, that this has become so normalized that now we focus on these things? What do you mean? Because I, I got to be honest, I think about my grandfather, mm-hmm. right? Like, and I think about the men of those times, like they're not emotional messes. I, I think that we emphasize these things and we try to draw these things out because it makes us weaker, right? Like if you're constantly focused on your depression and your trauma and you're not ever getting over the things in your life, like you're a mess. Oh yeah. It, it makes you a dependent on the system. It makes yeah. you a weak person. Like you're not able to to thrive in life because mm-hmm. you're always using something as a hang up as to why you can't succeed or why you can't move forward. And it's always somebody did something to me. Right. And it makes you a victim. Mm-hmm. It makes you a lot. It's a lot harder to be victorious if you're living in a victim mindset. I, I, sorry. I, I just think <laughs> that I think that this is actually doing a disservice to people more so than helping them. What do you mean? I was talking about it. Um, or? it it's almost glorified. I right? don't think we're glorifying. it. I think we are because it, it's become a, a battle for who has the more trauma, right? Like the conversations are being had about childhood. Well, this happened to me in childhood. Well, yeah, well, this happened to me in childhood. And like people aren't working through their shit in the moment. And if you have those moments 30 years from now where you're reliving your childhood memories and you're, it's making you depressed and sad and angry and Mm -hmm. you stay in that depressive mind state for fucking six months, that's six months of your life that you're not living Right, but we don't glorify that. Yeah. I, I think we talk about that and we talk about how that can ruin your life and how staying in that mindset is stagnant. Yeah. We talk a lot about growth. You talking and, about you and I? We? Or yeah. People, I'm, I don't mean us. I mean we as in a society. Oh, I meant we as in you and I on <laughs> <No>. this podcast. <laughs> I meant society, not no. us. No. Okay, so I agree. I do think that society does put a lot of emphasis on the negative things because misery loves company. Right. I think... Because you mentioned your grandfather, when you think about him, he wasn't a mess. I think that there has been a massive de-evolution in communication. Yeah. Of course, back in his day, I'm sure therapy was very taboo and it was something you don't talk about. And if you go to a therapist, you're fucking crazy. You're going to get locked up in a mental asylum and live the rest of your life there and be treated like absolute shit. That was the reality then. Men and women were also treating each other differently back then. Right. Of course, there were instances of abuse where men were beating on their wives over the littlest thing. There is also evidence of couples leaning on each other for support after they left their families. There were biracial couples who the black woman would have to cut off her whole family because she's marrying a white man or vice versa. And they literally only had each other. 
And emotions back then weren't judged the way they are now. Domestic violence is actually at an all time high. Right now? Yes. Oh, I believe that. So, you know, they people want to throw the traditional values and traditional marriages and be like men could beat their wives back then, blah, 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 blah. Like people knew it was happening. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it was as frequent as everyone made it sound. Yeah. But I know it existed. I also heard of instances where if men found out that one of their friends was beating on their wife, they would beat the shit out of him. Yeah, well, men were a lot more to look out for each other back yeah. then. You know what I mean? Like if your buddy was slipping, you would tell him mm -hmm. instead of talking shit behind his back because you're a coward. Like, right, or using it to get his girl. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very different time frame. And, and like you can, you can rip all of those things apart and mm -hmm. focus on, well, men beat their women back then. Right. But what about all the other things that happened after that? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or like... What, what were other men doing when that one guy was doing that? Right. What about all the men who were actually protectors? Yeah. You, you know, you know, but th that's never the conversation because it's not the narrative being had. People mm -hmm. want to stick to the point. That's a whole different conversation. I don't want to get in all that. <clears throat> I just think that on the glorifying of what I was saying with all of that is that the more of a mess we become and the more we want to compare traumas and see who had it worse and, and play the victim card. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's doing a disservice to who we are as a species and it's making us regress. It's oh. making us soft. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love history videos. I love reading history books. I love watching documentaries. I, you are not a worldly person if you don't know history. You could have traveled the world today and eaten at all these different places and taken all of these different selfies. <clears throat> I have no stock in your opinions if you can't tell me the history of where you've been. Yeah. Right. And because I watch so many history videos, I'm now getting suggested videos of why you wouldn't survive in medieval times. Oh, I, dude, I've, we've had this conversation. <laughs> right. But I mean, it's outside of not having air conditioning. And, right. It's more right. than that, though. The amount of people who think that they could have lived during the time of gladiators, no, the fuck you couldn't. Right. It, you're, you're offended by words. Right. It is literally you. You are the person keeping you alive. It is not right. your government. It is not Walmart, Target, Amazon, DoorDash. And you want to talk about the relationship strengths that were had in, even though oh. they were had of necessity? Oh, yeah. There they, was... You had to work together. There was a loyalty, mm -hmm. unwavering. Yep. Even if there wasn't an in-love feeling, you loved your human. Right. You spent your life with that person. Because you were dependent on each other for survival. Yeah. It's a lot harder to quit things when that necessity's there. Mm -hmm. When everything is comfortable and good, and you're like, yeah, I'm just bored now, deuces. Yeah. Like, that doesn't... It's. Yeah, that's why we have all time higher divorce rates. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, comfort, comfort's the killer of everything. Speaking of divorce rates, I learned a statistic this morning. Yeah. 70% of women in relationships already have a backup plan just in case. Wow. 70%. I wonder how many people were pulled for that. That's, that's insane when you think about it, though. Right. And that's just focusing on women. Of course, men have backup plans. Yeah. For the people in the comments who want to sound off about that, this was a study specifically done on women who were interviewed. Men don't have options like women do. No, they don't. So for that to even be an argument, mm -hmm. it's not the same. It's not the same. Men might be able to have a backup plan. Like, you know, if this happens, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. But to have somebody in place, mm -hmm. it, it's ready just, to go with a whole new relationship. It's just not the same. Yeah. If that was the case, men wouldn't be as lonely as they are. Right. They wouldn't be in sexless, sexless marriages. They wouldn't be fucking dealing with all the shit that they're dealing with. Mm. That's crazy to think about. Isn't it? And I was watching that and I was like, holy shit. And for all the women who want to say, no, that can't be true. That's not right. I was one of those women. I had an escape plan. And even if anything, nothing had like come into fruition, I know who liked me. You mean with a person? Right, with a person. Okay. Yeah, no, not in, not in this relationship. God, no. Well, no, I, was... I'm, I meant like, because you said an escape plan. I think right. that's a different conversation than having a backup person. No. Okay, yeah, that's I had, what I was asking, though. I had an escape relationship. Okay. And I was doing this 17, 18, 19 years old. What does that say about somebody's ability to be alone in the fear of, of being? Oh, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. Growing up, I was fully dependent on a parental unit for any emotional validation or like quality time or anything. If I wanted like to go to a friend's house or have a friend come stay at my at our house, it was a fucking battle. And there were stipulations. Well, if your friend's coming over, I get to do X, Y, and Z. Oh, yeah. And there's like a negotiation with a child. It's, I don't know, it was wild. But going into adulthood and forming relationships, like attempting, attempting relationships. I'm, I wasn't even forming relationships. I was attempting to have, I was playing house. And... I was absolutely terrified of being alone. I would play the guilt card like you're going to leave me and I can't I can't live without you. And they were staying out of guilt and pity. 
it, it was it was a fucking mess. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely terrified of being alone because that forced me to be alone with myself and my thoughts and the actions of the things that I did in the past. Yeah. I would use people as distractions. Did I just hit you with a lot? No. Ironically enough, the, the thoughts that you triggered in saying what you were saying had absolutely nothing to do with what you were saying. They were just... My, my brain just went from train track to train track to train track to train track. Okay. I had a, a bucket list item for a while. This is where this out started and how it ended up doesn't really matter. But I had a bucket list item that I wanted to travel alone. I wanted to go somewhere I've never been mm -hmm. by myself with no plan. Get on a plane, go somewhere, spend a week somewhere yeah. and like just experience life with zero responsibility, zero mm -hmm. intention no, no person to experience it with me so that if there's a problem, it's solely on me to figure out in the moment. And I wanted to do that because the idea of traveling alone is scary. Right. You know, you hear all these horrible things about bad travel plans or, you know, cars breaking down in the desert, plane crashes or people being abducted or whatever, you know, it is. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to experience that once in my life. And like, it's crazy how much things have changed because I don't want to experience that anymore. Like, I don't need to, I don't have that want to roam freely alone. What changed? You. Oh, but and again, so again, the, how where I ended up doesn't really matter. But right. that's that's what started my train wreck of thoughts. Yeah. So there were a whole lot of things that just went through my head when you were going through all that. It's just um, I, I used to believe that like we needed to experience things in solitude to really get the full effect of them. But I, I don't believe that anymore. I think that we experience things. And, and the way we experience them will give them a different outcome. And there's not a right way to experience something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like. And I believe that our victories and our wins and our good moments are so much better when there's another person to experience them with us. Oh, 100%. There are even times now, like, if I go out with a friend and we go kayaking or I'm going and doing like a early lunch date with a friend and we're having a conversation there, every single time I have gone out with somebody else that is not you, I have always had a moment of, damn, I wish he was here. To experience that. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I wish he was here for that. I can recount that funny thing I said to him, but it's not going to be as funny as it was in this moment. Right. It's not going to hit the same. Yeah. Yep. The energy's not there. Yep. I get that. Totally get that. All right. We're 40 minutes in. Let's bang out some emails and then let's do an R&R &R if we have time because I still want to record the stories episode. Okay. Hey, before we do that, mm. guys, just so you know, these conversations that we get into with these emails are purely opinion based. We are not licensed therapists. We are not licensed anything. Um, in terms of relationships, people want our advice. They write us emails and we answer them based purely off of our opinion. Yes. This is solicited opinions. Yeah. Life experience, mm -hmm. our, our perspective, giving our thoughts on things. So take mm -hmm. our advice, however you want to take it. Also, because our phones are on do not disturb while we record now, and we can no longer yell patron when patrons come through, we have a Patreon account <clears throat> that gives you exclusive content, live streams once a week. Um, fun other things, a, a Discord community. There's a whole lot involved in all that. I highly suggest that you check that out. There's a link in the description of the video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple or uh, Spotify or whatever podcast service, there's a whole lot of content that you're missing out on by not watching the, the content. There's videos and things that you guys will never see that, that are video-based that goes to YouTube and Patreon only, so check those things out. Mm -hmm. There are also talks <clears throat> of adding another tier to our Patreon where you get extra goodies like quarterly t-shirts that are not released to the public. They're just for you as the subscribers. Yeah. We're trying to make it worth like the bang for the buck. So we're still trying to figure out what else we can add to that tier to make it worth it for you guys. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, let's run it. Okay. So this is an email that I had pulled aside and I had it pulled aside for a couple of reasons that I will discuss at the end of the email because it will make so much more sense. Okay. So if at any point you want to jump in and say something, certainly do so. I like it when you talk. <laughs> and this is a short email. Okay. So this one is titled, Peaches, Please Help. Peaches, 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 peaches. <laughs> the kids sing that song now. Yeah. They have no idea that I go by peaches. They have no clue. Yeah. I'm just... Well, mom. Mom. And yeah. then sometimes government name. They catch me off guard with that sometimes. <laughs> Specifically our son. And it always makes me laugh because I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> Not even my husband calls me by that name. That's for emergencies. <laughs> but they sing the Peaches song walking around the house. And I'm like, y'all don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so this email starts with, hi. 
H A I I I I I I I like that. I'm a 19 year old nursing student, and I know you may see this and think it's a crazy long and think it's crazy long, and also doesn't have any punctuation because I hate it. You hate punctuation. But what, anyways, back. What did to punctuation me. ever do to you? <laughs> Lazy. But anyways, back to why I'm emailing. <laughs> See what happens when there's no punctuation? You make her pause unnecessarily. <laughs> I am processing. Hang on, let me read this again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 19-year-old nursing student, and I know you may see this and think it's crazy long and also doesn't have punctuation because I hate it. But anyways, back to why I'm emailing. Crazy that she said that she hates punctuation because she actually added it in the comma where it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> or did the wizards do that when they... Pro oh, they may have. Mm. Yeah, I'm doing the work. Yeah, I just want to take a moment and just really appreciate Jenna. I talk to her every once in a while. I don't talk to her as much as I would enjoy speaking to her. She is such a, like, every time I talk to her, I just think you're like chicken noodle soup for the soul. <laughs> She's <laughs> just so, she just reverberates this warmth. And I was going through it last night, and I looked at you and I asked you a question about something I'm going through, and you're like, I have put zero thought into that, <laughs> and I think you're doing okay. And I was like, okay, thanks, babe. And I was like, that that didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that didn't do it for me. I was like, I love that. He took the moment, and he really heard me out, and he he conversed with me. I really appreciate you doing it. And I was like, maybe I need like a woman's perspective. Like, So I reached out to Jen A, and I, I just dumped on her. And she gave me her feedback and I was like, oh, thank you so much for taking a moment to do this. Cause like you can tell that she has put thought into it mm -hmm. without me prompting her. So that's the beauty of the community that we've created through our oh. discord, which you have to get through Patreon. So shame Patreon plug yet again, that discord community is dope. However, you're mm -hmm. only going to get out of it what you put into it. Correct. We see the same names over there over and over and over again. We get in, there's the same people having conversations and there's a lot of lurkers who will chime in every once in a while. Mm -hmm because of anxiety right guys if you get in there and just start talking we will talk back to you other people will talk back to you unless the chat's moving super too stupid quick mm -hmm. because there are times that that happens but for the most part everyone will engage we, we yeah. built a really dope mm -hmm. support system through all of that yeah i have also started doing a monthly's monthly women's challenge in the discord group I'm not going to tell you what it was. I'm not going to give it away for free. But so far, everybody has really been enjoying it. It has been very thought provoking for them. And they're like, holy shit, I've never thought about this. And now I'm anxious. <laughs> and I'm like, good. Good job, babe. You're making people anxious. <laughs> good. I want you to be anxious because now you're going to figure out how to overcome that by figuring out boundaries and shit. We're going to do it together. I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah. Okay. Back into the email. I've been with my boyfriend for two and a half years. So 16 and a half is when they started dating. No. 17 and a half. She's 19. So this is a very, very young, very fresh relationship. And he recently just asked me for a two month break, which I have agreed to because I'm very much like peaches in the way of maturity. That was one of the first reasons I picked out this email. Okay. Is she wrong? She is very wrong. I figured. I have the maturity that I have and I would never take a break. No, never. I would never take a break. Either we are going to work through this together because what are we going to do in 30 years and we're married? Hey, babe, I want to break for 30 months or for three months. No, bitch. I will shackle you to me. I will hold your dick while you pee. That, that we need a break is literally just to make the breakup easier. I believe it is. Yes. It, that's all it is. It's mm -hmm. a psychological thing because we've already been separated for three months. When I hit you with, okay, I don't want to do this. Or I, I've moved on. Right. It. You know, or even there's not even a, a thing like mm -hmm. I've seen people leave people hanging on for months while they've moved on to another person and not said shit to the other person because they didn't want to fucking hurt them. You know what I mean? Like, right. Just end it. If that's the case, just end it. Move on. Mm -hmm. Look, this isn't working. I'm gonna go do something else with my life. Got to go. Right. So <clears throat> I wanted to clarify that right off the bat. I do view myself. I tend to be a very mature person. There are times where I let crazy slip. And I'm Harley Quinn and I'm immature, whatever is happening. But I, I do overall believe that I am a, an emotionally mature person. I behave, my, I conduct myself in a certain way. And if that has ever been misconstrued in any way, I want to clarify that. So I am clarifying now. I do believe that I am mature. And with my maturity, I believe that breaks are immature. Okay. I, I'm going to... I'm going to disagree with that. They're immature. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. They are at a base level. It is an immaturity. Right. I it, think it's a weakness though. Okay. 
I, I think that people do that because they're either afraid of hurting their person or they don't have the, the, the backbone to just be honest with them. I, I think that, I, yeah, yeah. I, I still think that's immature. Or they have an ulterior motive. Well, we were on a break. Right, like we weren't together during this time. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Base level, you're right. Okay. It is immature. Back into the email. I agree that a woman does for a man and takes off his boots every day and that and is the sunshine when he needs it most. But the reasoning behind it is very discouraging for me, even though it may be what he needs. So I also wanted to clarify this sentence. I love taking your boots off for you. Fuck it. I'm going to say it. And y'all can judge me all you want. I would. You could be sitting in a chair and I will kneel next to you and lay my head in your lap. Yeah. I am all about that. Not saying y'all have to do it, but thinking about that shit makes my heart flutter. Oh, I know. Because as soon as you started talking, you're like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know that just it does something primal in me yeah I can't explain it to you like makes it, you feel like a renaissance painting right yes like a renaissance painting like the caveman who's buff and you're you're fucking out there killing animals and bringing them back for for me to cook and I'm the dainty woman at home making sure the cave's taken care of I, I don't know base level primal shit in me and I do that because of what you do for me in return I feel that way because of the way you feel for me and the actions that back your feelings. So you're saying that's earned and not given? Correct. I read something today. I'm not going to state claim on this, but somebody said, if words are money, then actions are the gold that backs it. Wow. Right? I read that and I was on the toilet and I was like, I need to take a minute. <laughs> like I was done. I was just peeing, but I was like, I need to take a minute. Like I, I just, it fucked me up for a second. I was like, oh my gosh. And we don't even have the gold to back our currency in America saying, anymore. I was just going to say that shit. They took us off the gold standard. It means nothing. <laughs> it means nothing. So pretty much all around in America, we're fucking up. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Your words don't mean shit. Right. They really don't. It all comes down to your actions. It really does. So I want, I, I want to also specify and clarify for some, if that needs to be done, that everything that I do for my husband is in reciprocation to what he does for me emotionally spiritually physically emotionally spirit spiritually physically mentally that's the other one all of it moving on yeah okay i don't want to trample you if there's something you want to no I, I have a lot to say about that i think that could be an entire episode by itself we can do that for the r and r and we could um we could that that's a lot there's a lot there and there's a lot there that speaks on our relationship and the assumptions that people have of us I'm just going to make a mental note of caveman. Okay. Well, if that's what may, if that works for you. Primal. Don't. Let's do primal. Okay. Okay. It is scary. He decided randomly one day to tell me that he was basically overthinking about being committed because he's, because he is 18 and doesn't have his shit together. And he's scared. He's not what I need. And he's not mature enough for my emotions. It's a cop out, which in all fairness, I can be an absolute psycho sometimes. But after two years out of nowhere saying all of this after thinking in my head we're completely fine is terrifying because in my mind we've already built a life together and a future where I don't know what it'll look like if he's not in it. So I'm going to pause there. I'm processing a lot right now. I'm going to start with you just said I can be an absolute psycho sometimes. Yep. Pin in that. You went on to say you in your mind was thinking that everything is completely fine. So you can't be a complete psycho sometimes in your relationship and think everything's okay. Right. Because it's not, if you're a psycho, that's not okay. Right. So if that is, if that is an accurate description of how you behave within your relationship, you can't really believe that everything was fine out that there was nothing wrong in the relationship. When my borderline was completely unchecked and I was just a massive cyclone in people's lives, I thought that there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. That it, you were the one causing the actions to me. And I was just reacting to your behavior. Com That's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. That is a mentally ill mindset. And I was completely surprised when people would tell me, look, I really don't want to be with you anymore. Uh, why? I'm fun. I'm funny. I make you laugh. Why don't you want to be with me anymore? Because I couldn't acknowledge my own faults. So it was sudden for me too. When people were like, look, I really don't think this is working out. What do you mean? Everything's great. I'm not saying that you're mentally ill or delusional. I'm just saying that it's something to evaluate that maybe the relationship wasn't in the standing that you believed it was, especially if you're somebody who tends to be psycho. 
Uh, so at 18 years old or, or 19 years old or however old he is, mm-hmm. he's young. You guys are young still. Very young, yeah. Maybe he just doesn't want to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. He's young. Maybe he wants some strange. Maybe he wants to run out and try to fuck everything he can. Like there's a whole lot yeah. more than just I thought everything was fine. Well, they're also, they're now out of high school. <clears throat> like their lives are changing completely. They're not going to have the same routine that they've had for the last right. 12 years of their life going to school, coming home, like the mundane bullshit. Like he now has an opportunity to go wherever he wants and he's not restrained. He might be taking a gap year if he's going to college or his parents might be like, look, you can live your life now because life is fucking hard when you start working. So we'll be here when you come home and you can go a year abroad or a year across the country. All hypothetical. Yeah. But those could be things in the forefront of his brain right living situations also are, also should be changing around that time correct i know that there's a lot of people that stay at home now until they're in their mid-20s they're saying the average move out age is around 25 now which blows my fucking mind there's no way i could have stayed at home until i was 25 years old i mean obviously i left way earlier than that but right yeah no i turned 18 and i got out as fast as i could right yeah it's crazy to me that that's a thing and, and you can say that it's a financial thing all you want mm-hmm. it's a comfort thing Like looking back on it, if I had a better living situation Mm -hmm. and I was able to live and not have to pay rent, why the fuck wouldn't I do that? Right. You know what I mean? So like there is a, but, and there's also a, you know, well, I want my kids to stay here as long as they can to be on their feet and blah, 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 blah. And you're trying to be the supportive parent, but what kind of disservice are you doing to them when they're 40 years old and don't know how to balance their bank account Mm. and don't know how to pay mortgage and like don't understand taxes and like, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of life lessons that happen on the fly Mm -hmm. that you're taking from them. If if you're doing it all for them. Yeah. At some point, like the kid floaties need to come off. Yeah. Another thing Mm. I wanted to touch on is she said, in my mind, we've already built a life together and a future where I don't know what it will look like if he's not in it. You guys have been together for two years. Right. But she also said, in my mind, has he ever given you any inkling that you're going to be the rest of his life? That you're going to get married? That you're going to buy a house together? That you're going to move in together? Or did you just fabricate this in your mind and you made it more than what it is? Because people do that. I've done that. Right. Well, you can take that a step further, too, and say, has he said those things or shown action to accomplish them? Yeah. Right. Because that's a very different thing, too. The lip service doesn't matter. It, you know, they're mm-hmm. young. It, there's a whole lot of what ifs. Did the gold back his dollar? Yeah. I, I think that even if he did say all those things, it's changed. Yeah. Because he's clearly stated as much. Mm-hmm. I can understand that fear of not knowing what the future will look like because he's been your constant for the last two years. And as somebody who used to not be able to be on my own, I was terrified. When I left my ex husband, we had shared custody. We still have shared custody. Back then, though, the nights that I didn't have the kids, I would be at a bar. I would be at a friend's house. I would be like, I would not be home because I would be a sobbing fucking mess trying not to unalive myself. I couldn't do it. It was too terrifying for me. And then eventually it became no option of you are going to have to sit by yourself. And I did. And it was hard and it was difficult and it was dark and it was scary. And I was still sitting there trying not to unalive myself. And here I am breathing with an amazing husband, with an amazing life, with a platform where we can sit down and discuss things that can help people. Oh, I'm trying so hard not to cry right now. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the scariest things in life become the greatest experiences. And you look back and pinpoint your growth. Yeah. It was catalyst. This was my catalyst. This mm-hmm. is another catalyst. Like you are a massive catalyst. You were the catalyst in my life to make me change. Yeah. It's crazy to hear. I would have never stopped going to the bar if it wasn't for you. Yeah. I was in past relationships. Even after my ex husband, I was in relationships where I would still go to the bar. I don't I didn't care how it made you feel. I'm telling you I'm not doing anything. What you don't trust me. I love you. I love you too. For all of those who out there who think that I control her, I didn't actually ask her not to go to the bar. Oh, no, that was my choice. Yeah, I found out that it bothered me. Yeah, that it was upsetting you. And like I like at that point, I was falling in love with you. I didn't tell him. He had no idea. <laughs> he might have been able to see it, but yeah. there were already strong emotions there. And I was like, I don't want to lose what this could possibly be like over my dead body. Will I be the reason this man walks away from me? It was a strong, independent woman making a choice, guys. You going to take that away from me? <laughs> well played. 
Well played. Thank you. It's okay to be a strong, independent woman until you make a choice that feminists disagree with. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Then it's not okay. Follow the herd. Chew on that one, guys. All right, back into the email. I don't... So let's see. So this is where she's talking about she doesn't know what the future would look like without him. And in parentheses, she says, which I know y'all may say is codependent, and I am working on that. I actually was going to say delusional, not codependent. Elaborate for me. At 19 years old, Mm -hmm. you haven't even gotten dicked down by life yet. Oh, God, no. I thought I did at 19 years old. Right. You don't know what it is to have real financial stress. You don't Mm -hmm. know what it is to have debt. You don't know what it is to have a career. You You don't don't know know if the career that you're working for is even going to be your career. You don't know what it's like to have people actually work (laughs) against you. Right. Oh, man. Right. You're still probably living at home. Mm. You have no idea what it is to balance your bank. You have no idea what it is to problem solve a real problem in a relationship. Yeah. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like you haven't had real struggles yet. You're still a kid. Yeah. And I understand that people are going to get upset about that because you have struggles as kids. We've both gone through a whole lot when we were children. Yeah. Our kids currently are going through struggles. Right. It doesn't minimize what they're going through. It's just not adult real life. Struggles. Right. It's not adult struggles. Yeah. You haven't experienced that yet. So you believe two years into a relationship at 19 years old that this is going to be your forever person, but he's now telling you that that's not the case, Mm. right? This is, this is not a scenario where there's high school sweethearts who are having a little bit of bickering and working through their shit. Mm -hmm. He's asking for a break. He's trying to exit the exit stage left. Like this is so in my opinion, I I think that that's a delusional mind state. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that if you're still at home living with your parents and you're in a relationship with somebody and you're trying to build the foundation for your future, that's what you should be looking at it as. I'm not I'm not worried about the future right now. I'm building a foundation with this person so that we can have a future. Mm-hmm. It's very different than living in this delusional mind state that this is going to be who you're with when you're 80, but you're not doing the work to get there. If you're having psychotic fucking moments with your person and you think everything is okay Where's your foundation? You're building that foundation in psychotic moments. Right. I'm good on that. If you were having psychotic moments with me while we were recording, I'd have fucking bounced right. quick. I'm not doing that. I've had enough of that shit in my life that I don't want that anymore. I know what I want. And they still have a whole lot of growth to do in who they are as people. Right. They, they haven't even come into their first true season in life yet. Oh, They're not no. even a quarter of the way through their life. No. So I, I think that a lot of that is delusional. I think it's hopeful mm-hmm. and that's beautiful as a motherfucker. And like that optimism and that want and that, that puppy love that goes into that to me mm-hmm. is, is one of the most beautiful things on the planet until, it, until it breaks. Yeah. And if you don't know how to deal with the break when it happens and like work through the shit, it, it can become one of the ugliest things you'll ever experience. My biggest advice for people who are going through their first breakup and they're experiencing that shatter Self-care. Yeah. Focus on the things that make you happy. If it hurts to think about that person, don't fucking think about them. Don't worry about deleting pictures from your phone. Don't worry about deleting TikToks. Don't worry about deleting Instagram posts. Don't worry about Facebook. Go MIA for a little bit and focus on what makes you happy. Live in the now. Yes. You can't live in the what ifs and the the pain of the past and constantly reliving the what if scenarios and something that happened three years ago or five years ago or six months ago. If somebody tells you they don't want you anymore and you've, you've now moved past that, that that part of your life is done. That chapter's closed. Mm-hmm. You can reflect on that chapter. You can work through, well, you know, if Jane Doe would have done this, I would have had a better outcome. Are you trying to hold on to a thought? Yeah, I'm visualizing. I'm still listening to you. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I can, my, my brain, people people's brains work differently. And they're, the way that I process things sometimes is images. So I'm holding on to the image in my brain so I Go. can remember. Well, I was still listening I'm to what done. you're saying. Go. Okay. Um, I wanted to touch on what you said about building the foundation. If it's being built in like psychotic episodes, you're building your foundation on the relief that you're getting to your trauma response. How selfish is that? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to build a foundation that's broken. Right. Being, being in that and all of that is just exhausting. The whole pro that whole thought process is exhausting. Okay. I, I wouldn't want, it, oh man, how do I word this? When, when you're younger, Mm-hmm. That puppy love, that infatuation, right? It is. It's an obsession, it, right? It happens so fucking quick, mm-hmm. and you don't know shit. 
but you feel good in the moment. And this person makes you laugh and they make you happy and things are new and shiny and that new is exciting. Mm-hmm. And you you hypothetical all kinds of things until things start to no longer look as, as shiny. Mm-hmm. And now, now brass is starting to tarnish it. Instead of getting out that brass and spending that extra 15 minutes making it shiny again, you, you just dwell on the fact that it's starting to tarnish and it starts to get that green look. And yeah, like, it takes too long to clean up. Right. And so what, why bother? You know what I mean? And like, I have to do this every day. That shit just, it, it's so exhausting to me to think that people are living like that instead of taking the time to realize that your brass is never going to be shiny all the time. Mm-hmm. And if you want it to be shiny all the time, you're going to have to spend time every day polishing and making sure that that brass looks as good as you want it to look. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be an easy process. And if you're not willing to, to, to do that, don't buy brass. Mm-hmm. Stay single until yeah. you're ready to find somebody that you think it's worth showing off and shining. Worth the elbow grease. Right. I already, Sorry for the metaphor, guys. That's just the way my brain works. Oh, I love it. I felt like I was like at a, a meditative resort just then. <laughs> that was... I already have plans in place for like two weeks of this is what we're going to do after the kids first breakups. <laughs> like... For our daughter, we're going to have a spa day and we're going to relax on the couch and we're going to watch sappy movies and we're going to cry and feel our emotions. It's all planned out. And if she wants to change it, we can change it. If she doesn't want to watch sappy cry movies, we can watch comedies, whatever it is. But I want her to have in me. I recognize that quality time with the people that I love help me get through hard times. Right. Even if we're not talking, just knowing that you're willing to sit there with me in my sadness does it for me. <laughs> Did you have that? What do you mean? As a child? Yeah. No. I, I, did I didn't either. No. I, I wouldn't talk to my mom about a lot of things or, or my stepdad for that matter because I knew it didn't matter. I was a problem to them. Like I, I was more of an inconvenience to my parents than I was a child. I, I noticed that it would um, elicit anger. Right. Right. Because they don't have time to deal with me right now. Right. Or they don't care about what I'm going through. Mm. So you get to the point where you stop talking, you stop sharing those things. And that's, that's where that learning to bottle it up comes from. Yeah. And then with our son... Depending on how he branches out, there's so many different things. But I have already kind of made plans for you and him in my brain. When we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. It doesn't matter for you to have that information now. But when it comes to that bridge, I'll ask you the questions about quality time and man things on how to cope. Why are you smirking? Um, Because I I don't know how that would play out. I don't even like that's not something I've ever thought of. But, you know, um. Your kids are my redemption kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I've tried to reestablish the, the relationship with my my biological. I just, it's just not there. We don't know each other. Right. And, um, and it's not for lack of want. I fucking tried. I've tried hard. It's just not, maybe it's a me problem. Maybe it's a her problem. Maybe it's an us problem, but whatever it is, it, it's just not reconcilable. Mm-hmm. And with the kids, I've tried very hard to be uh, version 2.0. Yeah. So I, I don't know how any of that would look like when you started talking, all I could think of is like a camping trip or something, but who's to know if he would even be the man that wants the camping trip, you know, he could be mm-hmm. the video game kid or yeah. a soccer kid who fucking knows how, you know what I mean? Like it's right. so far away. He's five. I know. But like yeah. in my head, I do want to be able to do those things mm-hmm. and to do like side by side trips or excursions into the mountains where we have mm-hmm. that bonding moments. I don't know. I think it's important. <laughs> so, as my husband just stated, he is a bonus parent. So the kid's biological father is 100% active in their lives and they have a stepmom. I even have plans for them. I, <laughs> I got, I already have like, look, this is I like stepmom and I, we're, she is one of my best friends. And her and I already have like the next 10 years planned out for how we're going to parent. And if this situation arises, how are we going to handle it? And it's a whole thing. I love our life. It's crazy the way all this has played out. Isn't it? In terms of friendships and relationships with your ex and yeah. his woman. and Yeah. I'm excited for the vacations that we get to take together. Yeah, I, I am too. And it's weird because there's a lot of people out there who would be like, I would never vacation with my woman's ex-husband. I, I would. Right. He's he's not that bad of a dude. Like we have a whole lot in common. A lot of mm-hmm. things that we can discuss. And have if, stupid boy moments, too. right? And if you, you and you and his woman and and our daughter are are having a lifetime movie marathon, and the three of us are at a gun range, mm-hmm. and our son is learning proper weapons training, or we're fucking ripping side by sides through the mountains, and he has the two men who mean the most to him in his life, right? Getting along, right? That's there's there's something to be said about that, and I I don't why why in the fuck am I going to have a problem with somebody that you're not with? 
Right. You, you know what I mean? Like your past is behind you. If mm-hmm. you wanted that, you would have stayed there. Mm-hmm. And this idea of like, you can't have a relationship with somebody from your past because we now have a relationship is fucking asinine to me. I think it's also dependent on behaviors, right? If yeah. if he was a fuck face. Right. Well, that's different. Why right. would you want to have somebody in your life that's a fuck face? Exactly. So there are depending variables yeah. and whatnot. That's not saying that you should force yourself to be friends with no. your your person's ex even if they're a dick. You shouldn't force anything to be in your life. If it's right. not if it's not watering you as you say, as mm. you say, if it's not watering you, it's not serving you. Yeah. How is this relationship serving you? If this is not a benefit to you, cut it fucking loose. Mm-hmm. Because all it's doing is sucking the nutrients from your soil and you are not going to grow. Yeah. Period. You don't put con- like contaminated water on your plants. It'll kill it. Right. All right. Back into the email. I guess what I'm asking for is why does he need a break when I am matured as a woman while we're together and adjust to his needs and grew and learned in good ways all while still with him and going through college. That's a hell of a fucking assumption there, isn't it? Right. So I'm. why does he need a break is a question you need to ask him. Right. It could be a plethora of things. It could be that you're crazy. It could be that you're over-controlling, overbearing. It could be that you're not invested enough into the relationship as much as he wants you to be. It could be that you guys just don't mesh anymore. And it could have absolutely nothing to do with her at the same time. It could, add, it could, be, it could not be you at all. Yep. It could be that he doesn't see himself being with somebody for the next five years as he pursues his career goals. Or he wants to be a whore for a little while. Yeah. It's a common thing. Yeah. It could be anything. Could be looking for a level up. He could be looking for a level up. Could, yeah. Dude, that, there's so many what ifs there. Mm-hmm. And the downside of this is if her psycho moments have been in moments of truth from him, she'll never know. Oh, yeah. She will never know. I do want to back up a little bit, though. So she just asked, why does he need a break when I matured as a woman while we're together? In the previous part of your email, you said that he said that he's been overthinking about being committed because he is 18 and doesn't have his shit together. And he's scared that he's not what you need and he's not mature enough for your emotions. That's a good point. That's it. He's told you. So now you are seeking outside advice to maybe validate you to go to him and go, well, somebody else said this. Maybe... We should try this again. He's told you why. And I don't know how you've matured as a woman because you haven't said how you've matured. You have not talked about how you've adjusted to his needs or how you've grown to adapt to his needs. I know nothing about you as a woman. Right. There's also things to think about, like women mature faster than men do. They do. Right. So there's that. At 43 years old, Mm -hmm. the person that I was at 30 years old was an idiot. And the person that I was at 20 years old was really a fucking idiot. Yeah. (laughs) So when you're 15 to 25 and you think that you've got life figured out, no, the fuck you don't Mm -hmm. slow your roll. Like you don't. Right. Life is a a lesson of learning. Mm -hmm. Be a student of life. Learn as much as you can and understand that even at 43 years old, I don't know anything. I get golden nuggets from everything. I process it and realize how fucking stupid I am on a daily basis. And that's not negative self-talk. That's reality. That's how it is. I know a little bit about a lot of things, but I don't know anything in completion. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. You're going to have to to roll with the punches Mm -hmm. and and learn and grow. So like maybe, maybe this just isn't it. Yeah. On the flip coin, say that you have matured and you have your emotional state under control And your psychotic moments was just a funny way to phrase that for you. And you are not going off the hinge and you are conducting yourself in a manner that is becoming of you as a woman. Maybe he's not at that point. Maybe he doesn't want to have adult conversations. Maybe he maybe he doesn't care to have emotionally intelligent conversations and actually come to resolution. He just wants to fuck around and have fun. Yeah. Make fart jokes, drink some whiskey and play video games. Mm -hmm. Could be a thing. Yeah. And that's okay. This does show to me, though, that you guys have not had conversations longevity wise because you have a whole life planned in your brain and he doesn't. Yeah. That, that's not different pages. That's y'all are in different books. I couldn't imagine not being on the same page as you. It took a lot of work. It definitely took a lot of work. 
And there were a couple of disruptions in that work. Right. Well, and that work continues. It does. You know, earlier we sat down and talked about how we had an hour bonding moment of a conversation that didn't need to be a, a, a intimate bonding moment. And we turned it into one. Yeah. And we worked through a whole lot of things in that hour. And it wasn't conflict mm -hmm. in any way, shape or form. But we worked through a lot. Mm -hmm. New ideas came to fruition. And right. The shit has to happen. Yeah. It, it's it, it's more polish in the brass. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my phrase now. I'm Polishing the brass. I'm going to try to remember that so I don't forget it. I like that. Yep. Polishing the brass and I just say watering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does my How does my lipstick look? I've been talking a lot. It still is red as a motherfucker. Yeah. Any on my teeth? Nope. Still white as hell. All right. This is me gathering information, guys. This is data. I, I will tell you if I'll go... Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> will you do it? Not even on purpose? Like, <laughs> no, I, I, okay. I will absolutely subtle hint you to death. Okay. And then if I have to say something, I will, but I will subtle hint like crazy. Cause it's way easier than be like, you got a booger on your face. Mm -hmm. but. <laughs> I appreciate that. Nonverbal communication guys. Back into the email. Yep. I miss our hand signals. <laughs> We don't go anywhere and have to use I them. know, we're not in public. <laughs> <laughs> when we were doing like group outings and yeah. doing the thing, we had hand signals. Mm -hmm. Like we would do like group outings at like mini golf and there's a bar there. And that's really the only time as we would go to a bar ever. Oh man. I just thought about me sitting at the bar chatting with the girls and I looked over at you and you hand signaled me and I was like, excuse me, ladies, mid conversation, <laughs> like somebody was speaking to me. <laughs> I just walked away and yep. it made my heart flutter thinking about that. <laughs> and you were standing there with a group of men. <laughs> yep. That was just fan. <clears throat> I'm fucking my body is forgetting how to do basic functions. Right, like swallow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Swallow, then breathe, babe. I'm so into you. It's stupid. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Maybe y'all can help me out. I'm really hoping I see a video of this because I don't know if I should try and give him the time or if it should be over because the last thing I want, because that's the last thing I want, even though part of me knows it might be best that, that it's being over. So I, I didn't read this far. <laughs> I read the first few things and I was like, okay, we have to talk about this. So I didn't read this far. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna reread that one more time. I'm gonna see if anything clicks for you and then I'm gonna jump uh, it in. already clicked for me. Did it? Okay, so I'm gonna read it and see if it clicks for you guys. I'm really hoping I see a video of this because I don't know if I should try and give him the time or if it should be over because it's the last thing I want, even though part of me knows it might be best. What do you think? Uh, I think she should end it. Yeah. I, I think that when somebody tells you I need a break, just end the relationship. Yeah. Be like, I'm gonna give you your break, but we're gonna be single while doing it. Okay. Uh, this is, we're done. Mm -hmm. You go do, we figure out what you got to figure out. And when you're ready, you can start courting me again. Yeah. And we can start fresh. Make them, make them process the entire thing over and rebuild a foundation from new. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to destroy the fucking house and start over. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Rip the foundation up. Redo the plumbing. Mm -hmm. Start that motherfucker from a fresh slate. Yeah. Learn each other again. Oh, what's happened over the last six months? How have you evolved? How's work? How's life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let that shit be a fresh start. So what clicked for me is that's the last thing I want, even though part of me knows it might be best. Why do you think that might be best? Is it because he said he wants the break or is everything not as good as you thought it was in your mind? Like, are you now recognizing that there were massive issues in the relationship and the times that you were psycho or however it was phrased? Yep. Absolutely. Psycho. Were those the building blocks to this point of this isn't it? I'm going to get religious on you. Okay. God is not going to give you everything that you pray for. Right. Because sometimes you are not ready for it. Correct. So the things that you want and the things that you need are not always going to align. And if you want this relationship to work, mm -hmm. maybe this just isn't it for you. Right. So maybe this is the answer, even though it's not what you want. Mm -hmm. And that could lead into future growth that will get you what you need. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm big on that. I, I always say, be careful what you pray for, because you may not like the way it comes to you. Right. You know, so it's just one of those things that what you want is not always what you need. Yeah. And God or the universe or however you want to look at it is not going to get you what you want if you are not capable of handling that shit. 
God or the universe or however you want to word that, it's not going to put things in your life that you're going to destroy knowing that it's just not the time for you. Mm -hmm. The season is not here. Right. I didn't bring all this to fruition for you to ruin it. Right. I prayed for you. Like, I still pray for you. I, I still pray for you. Of course, I like to keep me. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? What was that? I don't know. It's, Your whole body just went through it. Because like I registered what you said and I was like, oh my God, wait. <laughs> Is that what you meant? Like, kind of. I, I, I pray for you like as a person, but I, I pray that I don't fuck this up. Yeah. I pray for the wisdom to make right decisions when it comes to our marriage yeah. and to be a good husband and I, to be a that. good man and a good father. Yeah. So yeah, I, I still pray for you all the yeah. time. So Every. in a way, yes, it is that you stay. Okay. But that's more of a me problem and less of a God problem. Right. No, I, I get that. So I do pray for you as my husband, but I do also pray that I continue paying attention to the things I need to, to make sure I stay your wife and to be your wife in the way that you need me to be and support you in the way that you need me to. And yeah. Fuck, like God, don't don't let me fumble this. <laughs> right. Um, but even as a child, like the things that I prayed for as a kid and what I wanted as a man from the things that I was seeing. You wanted from a man. You right. said as a man. <laughs> no, the thing that I wanted, the things that I wanted, okay, yeah. <laughs> from a man. And based on the things that I was seeing, like took decades to get here, but yeah. it happened. It felt like climbing Mount Everest to get to this point and not the cute, oh, it's cold up here. I can't fucking breathe and I've lost three toes. Like, And you're not even at the peak yet. I'm not even at the peak yet. We're. Yeah. It's, and, and that's how you're supposed to look at it. Yeah. Right. You've hit a ledge. There's another peak up there. And like, you know, somewhere a year yeah. up there is a summit maybe, you know, you know. Yeah. Like I've had to sit here and catch my breath for the last six months. Yep. And now I'm going to keep going. And it's maybe 30 feet to the next ledge. And I'm like, fuck, I need another break. Sometimes the weather is just working against you. Yep. One day you might go two miles and the next day you might go 20 feet. Still progress. Though. It is still progress. Back into the email. Yep. I want to thank you both for your time and patience for this mindfuck of an email. And I hope behind the scenes everything is sincerely going okay. I can't imagine the stress from the negativity and anxiety of it all. I am absolutely inspired by y'all. Specifically Peaches, by the way, you're like beyond hot. Anyways, I love y'all and thank you. P.S. Sorry for being avoidant about Chris, but that's my father's name, so it's really odd for me with the skull emojis. I don't care. I think it's weird that you called my wife hot. I think that calling somebody hot and calling them beautiful have two different indentations to them. And yeah. I think that calling somebody hot is a sexual thing. And beautiful is like an art thing. Right. So... Yeah. Your words matter. Yeah. I I like it when you call me hot because I, I... Right, but it's sexual. Right, because there are definitely times I go out of my way to look hot for you. And it definitely is a sexual thing. I think people, society as a whole, use hot as a very objectifying mm -hmm. compliment. Beautiful is... If I heard you call another woman beautiful, I might punch you in the throat. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like I, instinct I know you're reaction. Not. I, I can tell by your tone that you're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately afterwards, I might apologize, but you fucking deserved it <laughs> because beautiful has emotion behind it. It does. It does. Right? Being a wordsmith. <laughs> Have you ever seen, I think it's called like identity theft or whatever. It has Melissa McCarthy in it. Yes. And she like Judy chops that guy in the throat and runs away. That's that's kind of how it would happen. So the angle of the dangle, you got your ninja stance, you got your ninja defense arm up, and you go, hey, Judy chop. But not from that low of an angle. I'm not that short. <laughs> Words certainly do matter. And I want to say I appreciate the compliment. I'm going to be honest, I don't. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I, I understand that... Women want to support women by being supportive in a way. Like I said, though, hot to me is a very objectifying word. Right. Well, so if you make everything about sex, sex loses its value. Right. Right. And if everything is about being sexy, then being sexy really has no value either. Right. So why not do something that to pay a compliment that actually has weight to it? Right. Because yeah. if everything is hot or sexy or fine. Right. There's no... 
Like that's just you hey, say how that you to everybody. Doing? Right. It, you say it to everybody. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Right. It's watered down. Why would I want down. the same compliment that is handed to every single woman there is? Right? Yeah. When I compliment a woman, which I try to do at least once a day, and sometimes if I, I don't know, dude has a cool shirt on, like dope shirt dude, never will I say, oh my gosh, you look really good in that shirt, my guy. No. Neat shirt. Your shoes are killing it. You got a haircut. I think that's enough for a man to receive a compliment of being seen, right? For the most part. I reserve my very in-depth male man compliments for you. Yeah. Should this way should be. Right. So when I see a woman and I'm paying her a compliment, it's your eyes are gorgeous. Your hair looks fantastic today. I can tell you put effort into it. Right. Your your coordinated outfit, killing it. I can tell you put that. Did you set that shit out last night? Yeah. She said in that email that she hopes that things behind the scenes are good and, and she can't imagine the negative we get on the internet. So just for you guys who have known about what we've gone through over the last year, there were a few times where the negative shit behind the scenes really started weighing on us. Yeah. And it created a lot of tension in life, not mm-hmm. between us, but like whether or not we wanted to continue moving forward, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we went through a pretty rough patch over the last like four months. That shit doesn't phase me anymore. I'm at a point now where I'm laughing at this shit. When people come to me, I'm like, oh, did you see? And I'm like, nope. And I don't care. Right. Yeah. I, I don't. If people are that invested in what we are doing, you're a fan. Mm-hmm. And we're winning because we're worried about our life and how fucking amazing things are for us. And we're growing and Correct. thriving. And people are worrying about the what if scenarios and things that have happened in the past and all of that. Like I, I told you today for the first time ever, I'm admitting that we are actually famous on the internet. Yeah. I, I think hearing you say that, cause even yesterday I'm sitting there with imposter syndrome. It's gone now for me. Yeah. And I don't know what it is about hearing you acknowledge it. I don't know. You're, you're my stable human being. Right. And out of the two of us, I feel you're majority of the time you're more in a, more in a logical mindset. So when I am in clouded waves in my mind, I do look to you as a lighthouse. So I guess in hearing you say that is like, okay, so I'm, I am not delusional. Right. And thinking this way. So knowing that we are internet famous to the extent that we are, obviously it's a small scale in it comparison is. to others, but it's yeah. still there. Mm-hmm. Seeing the amount of hate that other people get that has nothing to do with, with you and your life at all. Like mm-hmm. it blows my mind. So for me to put stock in the opinion of those kind of people, like, come on, dude, I have so much more shit to be worried about. Right. I, I'm just good on all of that. So yeah. um, there were, there's been a couple of times where like, we hit a level of this shit and I got over it and I was like, all right, this isn't going to affect me anymore. And then it got worse. Mm -hmm. And then it's not going to affect me. And then it got worse. Right. And now I'm at a point where I, even if it got worse, I I, I don't think it's going to affect me. I really truly don't think that it's going to bother me anymore because Mm -hmm. it's, I hate to say that it's, you know, lions don't concern themselves with the opinions of sheep because I'm definitely not a lion. But I, I realize that as if you were ever going to have any type of, of public eye, people are going to hate you for it. Oh yeah. A hundred percent because they're jealous. And why waste your time worrying about people that do not matter to you? If you don't go for them to it for advice, Mm -hmm. their opinion doesn't matter. They can feel however the fuck they want to feel about you. Love you, hate you. It does not matter. All the love and the gratitude and you guys are so amazing and you're doing all those things though. Yes, that does feel good. Just like hearing that people hate us may feel bad at the end of the day, we are doing what we do. And if you find benefit from it, great. If you don't find benefit from it, we're going to keep doing it anyways, because though you might Bob might not Bob your brother, Joe may, Mm -hmm. or your cousin, Nancy might get something out of it. So we're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. It it is what it is. So if you like what we're doing, share the content, the best way to help grow the channel and make sure that people find out what we're doing and continue to make us internet famous (laughs) is to share the shit. The monetary goes so far. Super chats are great. Mm -hmm. You know, joining our Patreon is super cool too, but sharing this shit to your social media platforms, telling people about it, making TikToks about us, that kind of shit, tagging us in it is going to continue to ensure that we're growing and doing what we're doing. Excuse me. There is work that goes in behind the scenes. We were talking about that today too, and that we want to continue educating ourselves with books and Mm -hmm. finding new ways to articulate things to you guys and new communication tips 
and things like that so that we're not just regurgitating the same old shit over and over again. We're not going to be stagnant water. Yeah. Although the Discord told me, and, and actually you actually said this the other day too, I think, that um, just because, actually you did say this the other day because you even hit me with, not, with statistics, but um, just because we have repeated this over and over again and the diehard fans have heard it, the people who are just finding out about us haven't heard these things. Mm -hmm. So us regurgitating them, unless they're going back and watching it from the beginning, they're not going to have heard those things. So rehashing right. those things is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And for those who have been here since the beginning, those reminders are a good thing. They are, yeah. So, you know, I listen to a couple of podcasts and I, the podcast that I listen to, I've never heard their first episode. Yeah. Never heard it. I, I have two podcasts that I've gone back to the beginning and listened all the way through. Yeah. I've never done that. Yeah. Two. But I, I also don't even listen to podcasts anymore. Yeah. Haven't found a podcast of substance, I guess, where I'm like, okay, I really need to go back and hear all of this shit. Audiobooks are more where it's at for me now when I'm yeah. listening to something, like in the car, unless I'm listening, if I'm not listening to music, I'm listening to an audiobook, trying to steer away from the comforts of YouTube and whatnot. But Aud yeah. Audiobooks are, are such a blessing for me. Mm -hmm. It's taken me so long to get through one audiobook because I have to listen to it over and over and over and over again right. just to retain. A fraction of it. Right, but you don't have to retain the whole thing. You, you know, you may not retain any of it, but if you're driving and you hear that one thing and it makes you pause mm -hmm. and you got that one thing from that book, it was worth it. Yeah. It was worth it. It was worth the whole eight hours of the three-hour book that you had to listen to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, And that's how I feel about it. There, yeah. there are books that I'll run through multiple times, though. And then there's times that we'll be driving and I'll have to, I'll, you know, we'll listen for 30 minutes and I'll pause for over an hour mm -hmm. and just really reflect and process everything that I heard and try to, you know, how am I going to be able to articulate this to other people? How does this affect my life? Mm -hmm. But I also, you know, that's that's the the beauty of all of that. It is it is self-reflection. That's the whole point. Yeah. Jordan B. Peterson said that you can't retain more than 15 minutes of reading. So if you're reading for 15 minutes, you should stop and reflect on what you've read and then read for another 15 minutes versus reading the book all the way through. And, and since then, I've made it a point to try to pause every 15, 20 minutes and think about things because otherwise you do start thinking about other things. Mm -hmm. How many times have you been reading a book and go, shit, I don't remember what I just read. And you go back to the previous chapter and you're like, uh, nope. And then you go two pages back and you're like, okay, here's where I started droning off. Well, I actually had to do that yesterday. So I have an app called Bookly on my phone. And it I, I want to have metrics on how much I'm reading. I want to replace my phone with books. And yesterday I spent probably 10 minutes because I, I'm reading the Radium Girls and... In the book, they're finally going over. So there is um, a doc, a couple. They were both, I believe, either doctors or radiologists. They're very well knowledgeable in that realm. They did a, an extensive investigation on radium, and they finally released, like in the book, they're they're selling. What, they are saying what the doctors said in their report, and it's blowing my fucking mind. And I was like, wait a minute, like that's not what they said in the last chapter. So I went back to the last chapter. And I was like, Oh, it wasn't in this chapter. So like I'm flipping through the book, trying to figure out where the information was. And I finally find it. And I'm like, Oh, they didn't address anything at all. I just placed my assumption. It's your cognitive bias. Right. So I spent 10 minutes going back through the book. If I had sat, I bet if I had done that 15 minute thing, I would have been able to retain the fact that the report wasn't released that the owner of the company, um, he pretty much lied. They, they said it in a certain way, but he took a chunk of their report where they said that their blood, lovers, blood levels were nearly perfect. Not a single girl tested had perfect blood. It was right. all, all of their blood at some way, at some point or another, was altered by the radium. That's what they meant by near perfect. None of right. them had a spotless bill of health. But the owner of the company took that one sentence and sent it off to everybody and said, everyone's nearly perfect. They're all great. Yeah. There's not a problem here. That's wild. Verbiage matters. It does. It's reading between the lines. Yeah. Let's get into another one. We're okay. an hour and a half in. We can do one more. Okay. And then we'll do stories. Because I really want to record an R&R. &R. Oh, I thought you wanted to do the primal thing. Do both. Okay. We have time. I have to leave it at one fifteen. so. I want to leave at 1 because I have to go to CVS. Right. So this email is titled, Arguing About Problems We Shouldn't Be. Me and my girlfriend have been having a problem more recently with arguments on things I feel like we shouldn't be focused on. That's selfish, but okay. I was about to say, what a perspective. 
right? Now, what, what are we focusing on? If it's folding the towels, I agree that, that either you're going to fold the towels the way you want to, or I can fold the towels when you ask me to, and you're going to deal with how they're put away. This falls under that whole, um, this is stupid. Why are we arguing about this? Yes. Yeah. Because it, it may not be stupid to you. Right. Right. Those are conversations that we had to have very early on in the podcast. Just because this doesn't matter to you doesn't mean it matters, doesn't matter your person. Right. Maybe you just need to validate them, make sure that they're being heard and then go about your life. Sometimes mm-hmm. that's an easier route than making a big deal about the fact that you don't want to talk about it. Right. Or and that on, you see it as less than. Yeah. And on that towel example I just gave, a solution could be show me how to fold the towels. Yeah, or fold them yourself. Right, yeah, or fold them yourself. Why should I have to change the way I fold my towels my entire life? Why don't you change? Yeah. Why do I got to do it, right? Like, yeah. how about we make a compromise and you just be grateful that I'm helping you with the laundry and that the towels are folded and put away because mm-hmm. there's a lot more things that we could be worried about other than the towels that are in the closet that you see for a half a second as you're grabbing a towel. I don't even look at the towels. I don't either. I ask a lie I do because I look for the big ones. I don't. The big ones are on the bottom shelf. I know. I have to look for them. Why? Because I don't do that every day. Oh, you because don't retain where... my life of <laughs> matters where my towels sit yeah. is that insignificant. I thought I, w- I thought I was making your life easier by doing that. No, I mean, now that I know that they're on the bottom yeah. and you verbalize that, I'll just grab the ones off the bottom. But before then, I would just look and grab my towel. It takes me a half a second. I don't give a shit. I could have sworn I told you. I have better things to worry Damn. about. I've been doing that this whole time, and I probably haven't told you. I've been doing it. <laughs> well, now you know. And now I'm in the habit of doing it. Fantastic. Right? It just works win. out. It's a win. More recently, everything has to do with what if this happens, what would I do? How would I react? Etc. I don't know. I'm going to pause because I used to live in what ifs. I really did. And that's you living in your anxiety. Depends on the what if. It, it does. It depends on the what. You're right. And that in, in a lot of cases, that is the case. The what if scenario. What if we started a podcast and became famous? Right. That's a very different scenario. What? Well, yeah, but well, there are also actions to be taken in that. Right. right? Well, we, we want to buy a half a cow of grass fed beef. It's going to cost us twenty two hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, what if we do that and we can't pay a cre- credit card payment? Mm-hmm. Right. So is the what if scenarios a real life scenario that you guys need to work through to have a s- structured, sustained, healthy life? OK, because that's very different than what if I was a worm? Would you carry me in your pocket or in your hand or on your shoulder? Right. right. So let me rephrase. Unless it is, is pertinent the right word? Unless it has direct fallout. Like if we do this or if we don't do this and it has direct fallout on your life, if it is not that, then you are living anxiety-based. Okay, yeah. Right? It, yes, it, there it, there are absolutely scenarios where the anxiety base is a thing. Yeah. Like, the worm thing obviously is not an anxiety thing. So. What if we lose the house? That's what an anxiety if he leaves thing. Me? Right. Right. Those are all, those are anxiety based. Yeah. I agree. Here, here's another thought. What if, if I was a worm, would you let me live in your pocket, hand or shoulder? That's a request for connection. Mm-hmm. I just want to talk to you and I don't care how fucking stupid this conversation is. Just indulge me. Right. I miss you. Talk to me. Mm-hmm. We have those conversations. You do that shit to me. I do. And you respond. <laughs> Even if it's go, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm right every single time. Yeah, you are. It, it, you, your perception of the reality matters. Mm-hmm. If you go, this is fucking stupid and this is a problem, that's exactly what it's going to be. Yep. If this is, okay, this is kind of cute. She's she's wanting some attention from me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give this woman some fucking attention. Yeah. It's a very different scenario. Your perception is mm-hmm. going to dictate your outcome. Yeah. Attitude dictates life. Life does not dictate attitude. Yeah. Okay. That worm example... We've done that. I know. Shit's funny to me. <laughs> We've done that. And I, I like to believe that men and women bring conversations and situations to one another that the other would never fucking think about. Even if it's out of the blue, left field, what the fuck are you talking about? And that's fun, right? In those moments where I sent you that TikTok and I'm like, I'm a worm. Where are you keeping me? Right. And you were sitting there and scrolling it. And you're like, I can't believe I'm fucking doing this. And I can't believe the answer is my pocket. <laughs> I got super excited. Right. I was super stoked. Like, I, I honestly thought you were going to look at that and be like, this is stupid and just close it. But I, I still sent it, it to you. It was a request for connection and I obliged. Right. Because I sent it to you because I thought it was cute. I knew my answer and I wanted to see if you're going to play along. And if you didn't and never mentioned it, then okay. I might still send them in secret and then 
you'll look at it and then maybe eventually you'll jump on the train. Well, and you did, but right. And see, these things also come down to timing. Right. If you're dealing with your taxes, don't interrupt them about a worm question. Right. You know what I mean? Like you guys need to, to understand where your partner is. This right. comes down to paying attention. I think little moments like that, though, too, before opening that TikTok, I bet you were thinking about business or something that could be stressing you out or how am I going to make this work? Just your head, I know, is an amalgamation, even though there are fun thoughts and you're not always miserable in your brain. I would say 85% of the time, you don't like just sitting in your thoughts. I hate sitting in my thoughts. That's why I'm always doing something. Right. So me sending you that quirky little cute TikTok and you having to interact with me about how if I were a worm, it's a break from all of your bullshit. Mm -hmm. It is a moment where I am not just the light. We can bask in it and have a fun conversation. Back into the email. It was fine every once in a while, but now I feel like it's every day. How do I communicate to her that I don't mind us talking about our future, but I'd like to not have conversations about it if I was in a car accident? Okay, I'm going to reread that. How do I communicate to her that I don't mind us thinking about our future, but I'd, but I'd like not to have conversations about if I was in a car accident or what I would do if my kid did this thing that she saw on TikTok? I'm 22 and we don't have kids. Bro, she's trying to connect with you. This, mm-hmm. this is all requests for connections. Even more so, having conversations about what would happen in life is necessary. This is the courting phase. Right. This is the foundation building. This is how you grow into the person that your woman wants and, and how she grows into the woman that you need, right? Like, if you don't have those questions, how the fuck are you going to navigate things? Right. If you never ask for directions, how are you going to get where you're going? Mm-hmm. You don't inherently just know these things. That is that, bro, you're the problem. I, yes, I would agree. Th- this is a problem. If any of you that are listening to this gets annoyed when your woman is asking you questions like this, don't be with a woman. Like, don't don't be in a relationship because these requests for connections are going to be those life moments that matter later in life. Mm-hmm. What happens if you're actually in a car accident and she asked you those things because she wanted to know what you would want done and you brushed it off? And then 15 years from now, it happens, and you never told her what you expect out of those situations, so she doesn't know how to handle it. Right. What happens if you become nonverbal? Right? These what-ifs matter. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just because you saw it on TikTok and you think it's stupid doesn't mean that the conversation can't happen. Right. Bro, that means she's thinking about having kids with you. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what that is. Maybe she does want kids. Mm-hmm. Your perception is your reality. If this is a problem, it will be a problem. Mm-hmm. If you view this as she's trying to connect with you and trying to get to know you on a deeper level, right. you're going to have a much different outlook on mm-hmm. all of this. Is it an, Maybe your girl is dumb, right? Real shit. Maybe she's just stupid as fuck and you got her because she's got a hot little body and you think that that's all that matters. And now you're realizing she doesn't have any sustenance. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're eating empty calories. Right. I could see how that would be annoying. I wouldn't want to be with a dumbass. Right. But if you're in genuinely in invested in this person and you think that there's more there than a body, these questions could be could be beneficial to you. Mm-hmm. This is all women. You're not going to move on from this girl and go find another girl and avoid what if questions. That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not how it works. Every woman that I know, including me, deep in their heart are 15 year old girls. They want to have fun. They want to be goofy. They want to experience life. They Wait, want to have fun conversations. Are you saying that girls just want to have fun? Yes. Wow. Right? <laughs> and, you know, we get all the time in our comments that we look like teenagers in love. Right. We are. Right. I, I feel like we're 16. My body doesn't feel like that. No. But my heart and my soul oh, feels like that, though. God, my body doesn't feel like 16. <laughs> I feel, I'm not going to lie, this is totally off topic. There are people in the comments, a lot of women who are like super spicy that you're an older man with a younger woman and they tell me that I'm 21 years old. I am so flattered that you guys think I'm 21. <laughs> like that makes me feel so good about myself. My body certainly doesn't feel it. Yeah. Why? Why? Okay. Let me ask you this. Why okay. do you think women are salty by that? Because you're a good quality man. You, you are a man who has made himself known in the world, even if we didn't have the podcast. And you weren't a present on the internet. You are a very successful man. And you are emotionally intelligent. I think that there are some traits in you that a vast majority of women can't handle. Because they are too emotional. And they 
require things from somebody that they are incapable of giving to them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think that you are the embodiment of the idea of somebody. And that is what you, the idea of you are what a lot of women want. And because a younger woman is with a man in her forties, it's a problem. You should be dating in your own bracket. You're taking all of the men from the older women. Do you think that if I was with an older woman, they would have the same gripe? Or would it be a different gripe? Because now I'm still with a woman, right? Like the issue is that I'm if, not available to them. Maybe. I think it does boil down to the fact that you are no longer on the market. I think that me being younger than you and us having a 10-year age gap is the problem. It, that, that's the problem they're latching yeah. on to. Yeah. Our age gap is irrelevant to me. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not with you because of your age. I'm with you because of who you are as a person, right? right. And that who you are as a person comes down to your personality. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have made changes, the fact that I have made changes, our boundary list, all the things that we work through during the courting phase to make this a success. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody who's fucking miserable all the time. And that's the majority of people who are in their 40s. Not just men, not just women. The majority of people mm -hmm. are fucking miserable. Life has kicked you in the teeth a lot. Yeah. So the chances of me finding somebody that has your personality that is 40 years old is slim because you guys hold on to shit too much. Mm -hmm. I don't hold on to shit. Once I've worked through something, I don't care about it anymore. Yeah. I'm not dwelling on the past. I don't care if you guys think that I am a horrible motherfucker because of everything that I've ever done in my life. You're right. Mm -hmm. I am. Don't, don't fuck with me. Like I, I Please leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. I am. I am a horrible motherfucker. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm the worst of the worst. Believe it and move the fuck on because I don't need you. Mm -hmm. I have the people I want in my life. And if I meet somebody else of, of quality character and I recognize that in them and they recognize it in me, we can establish a friendship. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. But I also don't want negative, depressive, miserable people. If you right. come around me complaining about your life all the time, you're not going to be here. I'm not going to be there to answer the phone when you're complaining. Yeah, I, I'm going to help you problem solve the first couple of times. And if you live in that depressive mind state, you got to move the fuck on. Mm -hmm. I, so that that whole age gap thing and people getting salty about it blows my mind. Yeah. It's not like you're 18 and I'm 50. Right. You know what I mean? And a lot of people are going to say, well, not everybody can just be happy like that. I'm not just happy like this. This is a daily choice. Right. It and is there, a choice. Are, there are days where I'm not like this. There are days where I am solely focused on not unaliving myself. Yeah. It is a daily choice, though. I could be absolutely miserable every day and just gripe and complain and be a dark cloud in your life. And I know, even though I could do that, subsequently, that would lead to me not being in your life anymore. It would. It absolutely would. This, this comes down to the choices that we make. Right. You may not be able to choice. You may not be able to make the choice to not be depressed. You mm -hmm. can't just go, I'm not going to be depressed today and fix that. Right. But you can make it a choice to take a shower. Mm -hmm. You can make a choice to go to the gym. You can make a choice to do things in spite of your depression to be better. Mm -hmm. Right. And as you slowly do those things and start giving gratitude for the shit that's actually there, that depression and that anxiety is going to go away because you can't be depressed and anxious and grateful at the same time. When I start feeling bad about our lives, I go through the grateful thing. We did it this morning yeah. because I was having a really hard mental morning about like, I want to explore. Like, I want to do cool shit. We do cool shit all the fucking time. So for me to have my little pity me moment this morning was bullshit. And as we started talking and I started giving gratitude verbally out loud to you mm -hmm. about all the dope shit that we have, by the time we were done, both of us felt different. The conversation changed our yeah. entire perspective. You can't be grateful, depressed, and anxious at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. You might be able to give lift service. Yeah, I'm grateful for the grass. I'm grateful yeah. that, you know, my septic tank's not draining, you know, not clogged. Mm -hmm. That's not the same thing. True gratitude will cancel out depression and anxiety. You just have to make the choices to do it. Yeah. Being physically active, making good food decisions, counting your blessings instead of counting your, your defeats. Yeah. Back into the email. Oh, there was another example of how I would react to this TikTok of some woman saying she's cheating. She's just requesting connection, bro. Yeah. I th Go ahead. I think that when somebody brings up a TikTok where someone's specifically talking about cheating, they're looking at you for reassurance. Maybe. Maybe. That's definitely a way to look at it. Yeah. Maybe she's feeling like not enough right now and she's just looking for some validation. Oh my God, I can't believe I just heard this. Like, right. listen to this TikTok. 
even though she should verbalize, can you give me some reassurance right now? Because I'm already having a bad day and this just kicked my anxiety out. Will you ever cheat on me? Or do you think that right now, how we're living our life, you'd be capable of cheating on me and you need to be prepared for whatever answer you get because you asked. Ben, if a woman sends you a TikTok about someone cheating, assume she's looking for reassurance. Of course, assuming makes an ass out of you and me, but it, it takes nothing for you to go, baby, I would never do that to you. I can't believe that happened to her. Yeah. It's validating. It's reassuring. Yeah. Here's a thought because we both, I hate TikTok. I really do. I, I there do are too. golden nuggets on there all the time and I'm so grateful that I have it, but for the most part, it's a fucking cesspool. I've said it over and over again. Mm. If your requests for connections come from TikTok shit that annoys you, why don't you start a book club with your woman? Pick a book, right? And not like a fantasy novel, but like a real self-help book. And be like, all right, babe, I got a challenge. This week, I'm going to read this book. I want you to read this book. And on Saturday, we're going to sit down and have like a two-hour lunch. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to, I'm going to I'm gonna make fucking notes. I'm going to be prepared. And we're going to have a conversation about this book. And we're going to dissect everything that we, we found value in. That two-hour conversation becomes a much greater satisfying request for a connection than the 15-second interactions about a TikTok. And there's mm -hmm. sustenance to it. And you're going to grow. And she's going to grow. Because you guys are going to be growing on the same you're eating the same fruit. You know what right. I mean? Try that instead if, if you're having a problem with the TikTok questions. Mm -hmm. Back into the email. Like, I try and tell her I wouldn't like talking about hypotheticals because emotions obviously play a part in reactions Fact. and how things go, as well as context. Period. Right. Well, there's a cognitive bias there, of course. Right. But your kid breaking a vase, you, that, that comes down to an emotional maturity of knowing that your kids are going to do shit like that. They're going to okay. spill things. They're going to break things. Right. Well, that wasn't even the end of that sentence. It's just that this whole paragraph is a run-on sentence. So I'm, I'm adding in punctuation so okay. I can digest this better. Okay. So I try not to think like that as I know if my kid busts a glass vase and they aren't bad, I wouldn't have to pull out all nine stops and send them to military school. But if my kid was a nightmare and didn't listen and it was our final straw, maybe we would be thinking about stuff like that. So did you tell her that? Right, because you just told us. Right, you just what ifed with us. How how do you expect your woman to know who you are as a man if you don't have these conversations? Right. If you were a stoic motherfucker mm -hmm. and you just never talk, right, and less spoken to, and when when you and like and even if you're spoken to, if there's nothing of real sustenance or value to add to the conversation, you never say shit. How do you think the people around you are going to get to know you? They can see your actions. They can see that you're a hard worker. And that you're a gentle soul if you're not beating on your woman, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but beyond that, how do they truly know who you are as a person if you don't talk? Right. Have those dumbass conversations. That is why I have a very hard time making friends. It takes a lot for me to open up to somebody. Yeah. And there are times where I'm definitely lonely in my life. Of course, I have my husband and my children. I don't have a lot of friends though. Yeah, I, I, I can count all my friends on one hand. There are people that I, I text. There are people that I talk to, but I'm not having in depth. Like I'm having a fucking crisis. I need your help on this. I don't have that with people. Yeah. And it's because I don't trust people. I, <laughs> it's like allotted trust. Right. I'll give you this much. And then once you have proved to me that you can handle that, I will give you more. If you can't handle it, I will take it back. Right. You are the only person in my life who has unfettered access to my soul. Like you have 100% of my trust. There is not a single thing that I keep from you. If you treat your girlfriend like you treat all... Okay, hang on. Okay, I need to finish that thought. If you treat your girlfriend the way that you treat your friends, she's just a friend. Yep. That you get to have sex with. If you treat your friends better than you treat your girlfriends... Then what is she? Piece of ass. Right? That bond matters. It does. You're supposed to give your person some of you that nobody else gets. I would also like to point out that there's a difference between girlfriends, fiancés, and wives. Correct. Right? Girlfriends have to earn that shit. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of, of dating and courting. Like, you don't just give all that loyalty and trust because then it, then it becomes a weapon against you. Right? right. Like, it can be. You remember when we made that TikTok way back in the day where I was recording and then you jumped in mm -hmm. and I was like, I, I'm not going to give her all of me. And then people were like, oh, my God, you're using your past against her and blah, 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 blah. And there's no love there. And like they just shit on me hard over that. Right. 
all of those things, my deepest, darkest secrets in my life and my past will come Mm -hmm. over time. If I meet Joe Blow out riding dirt bikes today, I'm not going to tell him my deepest, darkest secrets. He doesn't deserve that. Like that relationship has to be established. That is an earned thing, even in relationships. You don't just start dating somebody and six months into the relationship, bear your fucking soul to them. That's reserved for a wife or for a fiance because the the wedding has, the date has been planned, not just a ring given. So when I say girlfriend shit, like, yeah, there's a difference between a girlfriend and a wife. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Not he, not he who finds a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. That's not how that works. Your wife is a very different level than your girlfriend. Right. So how many times has your girlfriend been a girlfriend? That's a hell of a statement. That's a hell of a statement. And how many times has she been a wife? Right. I've been a wife. I've been a wife once and I fucked it up and now I'm a wife again and I'm never making the same mistakes I did before. Right. That's a statement, babe. Yeah. I got you pondering that, huh? It was just, uh, there's yeah. nothing to add to that. Like that was a, a mic drop statement. You know what I mean? Like all of those failures, um, all of the the vindictiveness and your feelings being weaponized against you, uh, you know, that's a lived experience from other girlfriends, mm-hmm. from uh, from a man's standpoint. So when, you know, that statement just doesn't go to how many times has your girlfriend been a girlfriend? It's how many girlfriends have you had? Yeah. How many successful marriages have you had? Because if you're in one and it's currently successful, dope. Mm-hmm. But you have to work to make that continuous success. Right. And if it fails, you have to change to do the next one right. And for people who have been married three, four, five times, you obviously didn't learn your lesson. Like, I, I don't know. I swore that after my first marriage, I would never do it again. And, and God too. God made this situation work the way that it's working. And I'm fucking so grateful for it. But I, I won't do this again. Like, if you were to ever pass, like, I know we talked about this the other day. And I said that I would want you to move on and be happy and have those things. I, I don't think that I would do it again. I, I don't want to invest in another soul the way that I've invested mine into you. You know what I mean? Like, this is it for me. I'm I'm content with what I have. So you can say that, but I can't. I want you to be happy. That matters to me. Your happiness is a top tier for me in all things. So in the event that I'm not here, I do want you to be happy. And if that if that happiness looks like you being fulfilled with your plants living in North Carolina and the fucking mountains away from everyone, that's that's all that matters. That's all that matters. So my happiness and my want for you to be happy means, you know, me saying that, meaning if you were to move on and find another man, I, I I would not be mad about that in the afterlife. As long as your cup is being filled and you're happy. I know that that man's not going to replace the time that we spent together. You, you know what I mean? Like that's that that time would be our time. So I don't know. Oh, no, we're having a what if conversation. And there's clearly emotions involved. <laughs> I'm composed. Uh, Guys, I hope you find value in this. If there was something in here that really struck a nerve with you or made you ponder something, send it to somebody that you love and see if they can also find value in it. If you have the the annoying TikTok girlfriend that just wants to ask you stupid questions about TikTok, send her this video and ask her for something of sustenance. Requests for connections matter. Send it to somebody that you think really needs to hear this, even if they might get mad about it. Mm -hmm. You never know. It could create a conversation. Be like, yo, I, I listened to this today. And a couple things struck me, and I just want you to hear it and give me your opinion on it. You don't have to tell them that it's because they're the problem. (laughs) Yep, you guys could share hate on us Mm -hmm. as long as it brings you closer together. Yeah, fuck it. That's all that matters. Be happy, guys. Don't forget to like, guys, and share it and comment it. And if you're not subscribed, I would highly recommend subscribing. So remember, guys, you are the authors of your own life. So grab a pen. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.